Uh, Prof Hoon, or basically Chang, Prof Hoon Chang Yao, is an assistant professor at the Asian Studies and a uh, Singlum Fellow at the Singapore Management University. Reading off here. Uh, he's an adjunct research fellow at the University of Western Australia, where he received his PhD in Asian Studies, and he got a distinction for that, I'm told. Congratulations. He was awarded the SMU Teaching Excellence Award for the most promising teacher in 2012, and is currently the convener of the International and Asian Studies major and a founding member of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee at SMU. His research at SMU focuses on the Chinese diaspora, contemporary Indonesia, identity politics, race, ethnicity, religion, and multiculturalism. And so ladies and gentlemen, could you please welcome Prof Hoon to give the opening address for this event. Thanks guys, thanks, thanks for inviting me, I'm, I'm deeply honored. I'm, I'm sorry for uh, the slight delay, I went to the wrong hub. Uh, <laughs> I went all the way to, uh, where are we? To Bayo, right? I went all the way to our okay. hub, and then <laughs> not able to find level 7. So, uh, I'm, I'm deeply honored to be invited to deliver the, the opening remark uh, on a topic that I'm so shamefully ignorant about. Uh, I, I know something about religion, but I'm shamefully ignorant about atheism. So, so when, when Imran asked me to do this, and, and whatever Imran invited me for, I, I can't say no because I open a lot to him. So, uh, so I, I thought this is a good opportunity for me to learn a little bit about atheism. Uh, thank God my job here is not to prove whether uh, the God that I've just thanked exists. Um, <laughs> Um, or whether um, uh, God has created atheists in her image, or whether she's a creation of humans in their image. I'm here instead to convince you that dialogue is important, it is relevant, and also dialogue between atheists and religious people is urgently uh, needed. I'm not at all surprised when I was told that this is the first interfaith dialogue between atheism and religion. The, sh the sheer fact that we don't even have a proper term for it, other than calling it interfaith dialogue, proves his point. Well, one can argue that atheism is probably a faith in itself, because you know, there are people who actually uh, collectively do not believe uh, the existence of God. Well, I used to have a colleague, his name is Shubanka, uh, who taught in the School of Law at SMU. As a graduate from Oxford and Harvard, uh, he was extremely bright. And as a law professor who taught ethics, Shubanka was top, you know, uh, on top of the game. This is in addition to the fact that he's Indian, so you don't really want to debate with him. <laughs> um, because you never win. Now he happened to be an atheist, and a very, very religious one. We were pretty good friends until when we started talking about religion. Uh, now this is about seven years ago, before I joined any kind of interfaith activities. So I was still very much uh, cocooned in my evangelical Christian bubble. So Shivanka was a fervent uh, atheist, while I was a very evangelistic uh, Christian. On my birthday in 2009, Shivanka gave me a book entitled The End of Faith by Sam Harris. Oh. And as a gesture of goodwill, I returned him with another book called The Case for God by <laughs> Karen Armstrong. So you can imagine, right? I mean, with such strongly held difference, you can imagine whether there is any conversation possible between us. When we stopped talking about religion, uh, so after a while we stopped talking about religion so that neither of us, uh, neither of our feelings would be hurt. Instead, we tolerated each other's difference while harboring the persistent thoughts of converting each other one day. <laughs> now, we've not spoken for many years now, and he's now moved to Hong Kong, so I, I've lost a chance to dialogue with him to properly learn about what atheism is about, uh, especially to prepare for tonight's speech. Dialogue is the only way for us to surface assumptions, to remove blind spots and prejudice. It allows us to bridge differences so that we can reach mutual understanding and not just tolerance. The bar for tolerance is very, very low. It stems from a fear to confront difference, a fear of being hurt, a fear of opening oneself to shift his or her position. So we choose 
So Sri Lanka and I chose the easy and politically correct way out to tolerate and to remain silent about differences. Now we need to go beyond tolerance and I think we can do better than that. In fact, I think that our outlook on religion, faith, morality and ethics for that matter um, is often not a matter of choice but are influenced by our background where we were born and raised where we learn about social norms and values. So for example, if you were born in communist China, uh, you are probably likely to be an atheist compared to if you are born in the Christian belt in the US or in Pakistan. So then for many people, their position to be religious or non-religious are an accident of history. And the ways in which they make sense of the world depends on which hegemonic discourses they are subjected to. It is difficult, if not impossible, for someone who grew up in an atheist environment to understand what it means to submit to an unseen God. Likewise, for those who grew up in a religious environment, it is very challenging for us to eliminate God from our everyday discourses. The gulf between atheism and religion is often widened by the polarizing false dichotomy that each of us, sorry, each of the camp subscribes to. We are often tempted with the simplistic dualisms, such as atheist versus religious, sacred versus uh, secular, believers versus non-believers, saved versus unsaved, reason versus faith, um, and that religions are root of all evils versus all atheists are going to hell. <laughs> now these dichotomies force us to accept that atheism and religions are logically incompatible and the gulf between them unbridgeable. This is a very simplistic and misleading conclusion. Atheism is a continuum rather than an absolute position, so is religion. There are atheists who adopt various religious or spiritual uh, practices and there are religious people who at various points of their journey lost faith and found it again or lost it forever. It is dangerous for us to see atheism and religion as mutually exclusive and mutually antagonistic. It is dangerous for us to essentialize and generalize either of them based on particular characteristics that have been sensationalized. I cannot, for example, assume that I know everything about atheism just because I've read Dawkins. Just as you cannot assume that you know anything about Christianity just because you heard Lawrence Kong. <laughs> To dialogue is to find a common ground to try to bridge such gulf. It means for the religious to try to understand how an atheist could find it not appealing to be able to depend on a metaphysical, metaphysical power greater than him or herself. It also means that for the atheist to try to understand how a rational being could totally surrender one's reason to something invisible, unproven, and perhaps does not exist. I don't think that we need to trade our intellectual reasoning for faith um, or vice versa. The challenge is to balance reason and faith and to see how people draw strength from either, either or, either reason or faith or both of them. Now how do we do that? I think I'll pass the baton to the two speakers. They're more qualified than me. All right, thank you guys.